Gospel of Matthew. That's the first book of the New Testament. Matthew 16, in just a moment, Tamikia Bell, my sister in Christ, is going to read the Scripture before she preaches the Scripture. And I'm so grateful that you're sharing your gift with us. I see that in you and have been blessed by it. I've said before that our first time on this campus, before we even started work here, as we were coming to church in the parking lot, we saw Tammy Bell, and she greeted us. We hung out with her at the first fall, or excuse me, summer kickoff event in our mm -hmm. children's ministry, and she has been a blessing to our family ever since. She is a mother, a grandmother, a disciple, a church mm -hmm. mom, a sister in Christ, and Tammy, thank you so much for sharing with us. I want to pray before she reads and prays and preaches, but join me. Heavenly Father, we lift up Tammy to you, thankful Thank you, for your gift and your presence in her and on her, thankful for the way she stewards, and we're grateful, Lord, for the experience in front of us. As she preaches from down deep within, Lord, would you bless that word that comes out? Would you pierce hearts and minds in this room and online and move us to respond to who you are? So do come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Pray that with us. Come, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. God is good. You know, God is good to us, in us, and through us. I'm grateful to be here this morning. I said at 8.30, it never gets old, especially when you remember there's two services after the fact. So um, thank you, Pastor Mark, for the opportunity to share a word and uh, trust in me with our people. Let's go to the word. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah's are one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This, the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, we are so thankful. We are so honored to be in your presence once again, Lord God, to share your word, to learn your word. I pray, God, that you would speak to me and through me and to your people, that your word would fall on good ground, receptive hearts. I pray, Father, that you would be glorified and your people would be edified. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? But whom say ye that I am? This is the question that Jesus asks his disciples. Now, just for reference sakes, you know that all of us are disciples, right? So you're the disciples today, all right? I'm not Jesus, but you're the disciples today. <laughs> well, Jesus is in me, so what? Okay. Why would Jesus present such a question to his disciples? What was he really asking them? Why was he asking them? And what exactly was he going to do with this information once they told him? On the surface, it would appear that Jesus is asking one simple question to the disciples about men and then one simple question about them. But as we take a deeper look, what is Jesus really asking them? He's asking them, 
what do people feel about me? What do they think about me? And what do they feel about me? Because what a person says generally is based on how they feel, correct? And what you feel is generally based on what you think. What, whom do men, what do men say? What do you say? My disciples, my friends, my confidants, my brothers. How do you feel about me? What are you thinking about me? We do life together every day. It would be safe to say that people don't always tell you what's on their minds and they don't readily share their feelings. Which means we really don't know what they're thinking or feeling unless you're a mind reader. And I know every husband in this room is a mind reader. Right? Right. See, she said yes, yes, yes. But I have learned this. If you hang out with someone long enough, they're either, they're going to say something that will give you an indication of what they're thinking and what they're feeling and primarily who they really are. In Matthew 15, verse 17 and 18, it says, don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes through, goes into the stomach and then out of the body. But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from their heart and these defile them. In Luke 6.45, a good man brings things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So what's in you is going to come out you. So Jesus, he's asking them, what are people saying? So once again, why ask the disciples the question? What is the lesson to be learned? Jesus was known for speaking in parables. So there's definitely a lesson in this question. And I believe if we look at the preceding verses, 1 through 12, we might gain some insight. Verses 1 through 4 Jesus has a run-in, yet again, with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Show us a sign. Prove to us who you really are. Show Show us your sovereignty. Prove your deity. I mean, laying on hands, casting demons out of people, um, healing the sick, teaching the word, that wasn't enough. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they always wanted a sign. All through the gospel, they were hounding Jesus to show them a sign. But what's so funny about this, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had conflicting views, conflicting beliefs about the resurrection, about religion, about rituals, about laws. But they somehow could come together to tempt Jesus all through the gospel. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 12, 38, the same thing, show us a sign. But Jesus, he just rebuked them and he said, I'm not giving you any sign other than the sign of Jonah, which you already have. So I'd like to say that his day got better, but it didn't. When you pick up verses five through 12, we find Jesus with the disciples. Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees, we expect what we expect from them. They were always opposing Jesus, always trying to call him out, always trying to say he wasn't who he said he was. But the disciples, they did life with Jesus every day. But this is what happens. When they went across the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said to them. Be on guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They discussed this among themselves and said, Is it because we didn't bring any bread? Aware of their discussion, Jesus answered, you, Jesus asked, you of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? 
are the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking about bread? But be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus was a little bit annoyed with the disciples, but it's kind of confusing because he talks about leaven and he talks about yeast and that's in bread. So why was he so annoyed that they were confused about what he said? They misunderstood what he said because their mind was not on spiritual things. Jesus, his, his mind was on spiritual things. The disciples, their mind was on carnal things. In Romans 8, 5, it says, For those who, are, who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. So Jesus is, I'm with you every day. I'm constantly teaching you, but you completely misunderstood what I was talking about. They definitely were not on the same page. Have you ever had a conversation with someone about spiritual things and they are supposed to be spiritual and they take you back to ground zero? They come to you asking you for advice, spiritual advice, and you're trying to give it to them and they say, but the news said, or I saw this on Instagram, or my friend said, or according to science, and you're like, well, what you ask me for? You come to me and you want to go back to worldly things, but you come to me and you're supposed to be a believer and I'm supposed to be a believer. That is super duper frustrating. So when we pick up in Matthew 16, 13, Jesus poses this question. So we see what kind of day Jesus had already. He dealt with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and then he's dealing with the disciples who just totally missed what he was talking about. Who do men say, I, the son of man, am? Who do you say that I am? What are you thinking about me? And how do you feel about me? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So it, Jesus could easily be mistaken for John the Baptist. They were, first, they were first cousins, and they were close in age, and people would say that John the Baptist was a light, but we know that Jesus is the light. We, he can be mistaken for Elijah. Elijah performed many miracles. Jesus performed many miracles. Jeremiah was a prophet, and Jesus was off referred to as the prophet. At the, woman, the woman at the well said, I perceive, sir, that you are a prophet. Then he said, but who do you say that I am? So, disciples, who do you say that Jesus is? Peter, only Peter, he said, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Now we can go right on to the next verse or we can stay right there for a minute. The Christ. Peter got the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one with the anointing, the one who removes burdens and destroys yokes. Jesus, Jesus asked all 12 of the disciples, all 12 of them, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they answered. They said that they said you could either be John the Baptist, maybe Elijah, maybe Jeremiah. All 12 said what they said. But when he asked, who am I to you? What am I to you? Only Peter could answer. Only Peter so what does that say about the other 12 disciples? For one, it says that they are more influenced by the world and by what other people say about Jesus than they are about Jesus and they're living with Jesus. Secondly, it says 
that you can be around someone every day and not even know them. Around them every day, pouring into them, giving to them, and they don't really know who you are. Thirdly, it says you can take a person's presence for granted. The disciples were around Jesus every day. Yeah, he wears size 12 sandal. He liked fish and chips. Like, yeah, I mean, they took his presence for granted. And then they became too familiar. Number, they were too familiar with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, he multiplied the bread and, you know, the fish. We're good. He goes out and prays early in the morning. Too familiar. And then number five, which is the saddest one, they had no desire no desire to really get to know him, no intimacy. Because how can you be around someone every day doing life with this person? And I don't really know the time frame, but it appears that it's getting, they've been with him for a while. And they could only tell him what other people said about him, but they could not say what they were thinking and feeling about him. So as believers, take a moment to ask yourself these questions. Who is Jesus to me? Is he the Christ? Is he the one who removes the burdens in your life and destroys the yokes in your life? Does your lifestyle say that? Does your lifestyle say that Jesus is the Christ? Do you seek to have a personal relationship to develop your relationship? Are you too familiar with him? Do you take him for granted? Do you feel like you're doing him a favor when you show up? Do you fellowship with him Monday through Saturday or just Sunday? Is Jesus the Christ in your life? Is he the priority? Not a priority, but the priority. And I'm talking to myself as well, because this is an everyday, intentional, on-purpose thought and feeling. So ask yourself, what does my life say? What am I saying? How I live, where I go to to get my problems solved, how I handle situations and circumstances. What is my life saying? Is my life saying that Jesus is the Christ? Or am I like the disciples? Am I all over the place and I don't really have anything to say? Is my mind on earthly things and not heavenly things? But what does this say about Peter? We know from the scripture, Peter is bold. He's impulsive. He's unpredictable, a bit extreme, and somewhat a wild dude. In Matthew 14, verses 29 through 30, Peter recognizes Jesus on the water. And he says, bid me to come. Now, if I see somebody walking on the water, I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> I see you when you get over here. But Peter was bold. He said, bid me to come. Matthew 16, 22, we find Peter in the same passage of scripture after he said, you are the Christ, rebuking the Lord for telling them that he was going to the cross. Now, I I mean, I might rebuke a lot of people, but I don't think Jesus would be one of them. John 18, 10 through 11, Peter cut off Malchus' ear in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew Jesus led a nonviolent ministry. Jesus had forewarned the disciples that this hour would come. But Peter, when the soldiers came, Peter just took out his sword, psh, just cut off his ear. He just cut the man's ear off. I mean, that's extreme. His whole ear, like, it's extreme. Um, in the Gospel of John 18, 25 through 27, Peter vehemently denies Jesus three times. But I was reading this and I'm like, John was giving us the rated G version because when you go over to Matthew 26, verse 74, it says, Peter could be found cursing and swearing as he denied Jesus. And where I'm from, he was cussing. He wasn't cursing, he was cussing. And it must have been really deep because it said cursing and swearing. I always thought it was the same thing, but Peter was going in. I do not know him, okay? And y'all can put the rest in there. 
But even with that, in Mark 16, 7, when Jesus was resurrected and they came and they saw the angel, he said, go tell his disciples and Peter. He called Peter out separately. Go tell his disciples and Peter. So even with Peter missing the mark, the Lord still, can, he was special. So basically, after looking at Peter's resume, we can see that he was a fussing, cussing, water walking, ear cutting off, Jesus rebuking, impulsive type wild guy. He was like so unpredictable. But what was even more beautiful, just above all of that stuff, this is what you know, we love about the Lord. Even with all of our stuff, Peter sought the Lord. Because in verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed out art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. And the this is that Jesus is the Christ. He's the one that's going to deliver you. And Peter was probably praying because he needs deliverance because he's doing a lot here. But my Father, which is in heaven, he revealed this to you, which means Peter went to the Lord and said, who is this dude walking on the water? Like, who is this? Jesus the Christ. He wanted to know. So although Peter missed the mark on so many things, he sought the Lord. He had a desire to seek the Lord. And the Lord pronounced a blessing over him. And why is that a blessing? Because to have the revelation knowledge and the understanding that Jesus is the Christ, he's the one that's going to remove your burden and destroy your yoke. And why do I keep saying that over and over again? Because Peter knew that a burden will weigh you down and a yoke will keep you down. So knowing who Jesus the Christ is, that revelation, it was a blessing to know that. Ask yourself, once again, is Jesus the Christ? Is he the one in your life that removes the burden and destroys the yoke? Does your life declare that? Where do you go? What do you do? Are you too familiar or are you seeking him? Are you like Peter? Are you hungry? Are you hungering and thirsting after righteousness? Because the scripture does say if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. So I want to encourage you today to live a life that says that Jesus is the Christ. He who saves, the anointed one with the anointing. The one that removes the burden of sin, the burden of doubt, the burden of stress. And even being complacent is, is burdensome. That's who Jesus is. So who do you say that Jesus is? Because what you say in your lifestyle tells what you think and what you feel about Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we praise you because you are the Christ. You are the anointed one with the anointing. And I pray, Lord God, on today that we would stand in that truth and that we would be like Peter, Lord God, that we would hunger and thirst after you, that we would seek the Father to know who you are. In Jesus' name, amen.